Angie, you did a really superb workshop on impactful research. And so I'd like you just to talk a little bit on this video snippet about what is impactful research and why is it so important? Thank you very much for your kind words, Linda. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the workshop. I Great. think you've got some amazing people here. We do. And the well. mix of um, academics, students and community partic participants was just delightful to see. So I've had a wonderful time. Super. In terms of impactful research, how I see that is um, research that will actually make a difference beyond academia. Mm -hmm. And I was very interested to hear that in the South African context, this idea of redressing was something that's quite prominent in your work and important to you and is something that you're also judged on in relation to your research. Mm -hmm. In um, the European and North American context, it's a broader sense of impact, but it's very much about having a, a, an impact on society or culture other spheres beyond academia and for me it's incredibly important it's the reason why I'm an academic personally I wouldn't be doing work if I didn't think it was going to make a difference somewhere. You are very well known for advocating a co-productive approach to research and I'm not always sure that a co-productive approach is well understood um, certainly in South Africa so will you tell us a little bit about what you mean by a co-productive approach and how you think that links to research that's impactful? A co-productive approach for me is very much about working with people who are not academics, mm -hmm. so that might be practitioners, mm -hmm. parents, young people, policy makers, mm -hmm. and actually students as well because they're often in a mix and in, certainly mm. in, my, in my context Students aren't always valued as people who really have great deal to offer and give in wider research projects. It's often and, quite and individualised. They mm. They're amazing. And I've seen that a lot here as well. That's something you seem to be absolutely fantastic at, is drawing in students to work co-productively with other people. So in all our teams, we work with people alongside us. Often it's their idea, the research project, in okay. the first place try to work on things that are priorities for people beyond academia rather than our own priorities, our pet projects that we mm -hmm. fancy doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that's very, very important to us. Increasingly in the UK and beyond, co-productive research is, is becoming quite, quite um, an important area of research. It used to be something that people would um, see almost as a sort of poor relation of um, research and the the, not hard science. Not hard science, the, but the research councils and other people are really taking it very seriously. We have a fantastic cross-disciplinary research programme called the Connected Communities Programme, which is funded by our Arts and Humanities Research Council and the Economic and Social Research Council. And that has been a massive impotence with some millions of pounds wow. poured into it. Yeah, And, and it's basically a research programme that is... That is um, all about undertaking research by, for, with, alongside communities. So, and, and how does that enhance the impact of research when you work in this collaborative way? I think, for one thing, not always. I think it's really, it's very easy to be very glossy about this and think absolutely everything has to be done by everyone and that will always make it marvellous. Well, there are serious problems with some of the technical competences in research. Mm. Things like, you know, not everyone knows how to use SPS and to generate survey data. Mm -hmm. Some of the things are quite technically complex. However, having said that, in my own personal experience, I've found working in this way, it's made our actual research questions much mm -hmm. more, ti much tighter, in fact, much Be more to relevant. to interrogate them. Yeah, mm. much more relevant. We've had to think much more about what the point of it is. If you're in a room with six people who are really, really saying, what is the point of this research and where is it actually going? Is it just your idea, you just fancy knowing the perceptions of these particular group of people on, on um, some particular aspect of child protection or whatever the research is or young people's feelings about um, some of the experiences they've had, well, why? Who else has done it? What for? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of questions mm -hmm. I find very much in co-productive research, mm -hmm. we are interrogated on right from the beginning. 
So it's meaningful yeah. research right from the beginning. To me, in my experience of how it's worked in, in our research field, absolutely. Okay. And that enhances the impact and the uptake. Yeah. yeah. Again, I think if you have policy makers, if you can on board at the beginning, then obviously that's going to help enhance the uptake mm. if they like what you find. Again, this is a complex field mm. and, and that doesn't always happen. Mm. Depends what your research finds mm. and who wants to hear it. Uh, but on the whole, again, I think you have more, more hope of doing that if you can really understand who your audiences are, who you're trying to influence and have them alongside all the way through. Now that audience view often is the community. I, I believe that you are the director of a not-for-profit organization called Boing Boing that supports resilience practice and that you're the academic director of the Community University Partnership Program. Would you tell us a little bit about that and how that links with impactful work? So there's two things there. One is my role in the university as the academic director of the Community University Partnership Program. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the people in the university who has um, a, a real interest and mm -hmm. advocates for community university partnership research, both in my own particular research area, but across the university. One thing I do is I um, chair a group uh, uh, where we lead on research leadership across the university and, and deliver a, 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 a programme that supports other researchers. And in that community university partnership research, co-production features prominently. Mm -hmm. And um, myself and colleagues in the community university partnership programme, that is our role to try and support all kinds of academics across the university to work in this way, not just in research, but also in teaching. Oh, so we have so a in both core areas. Yeah, strong curriculum that mm. supports students to be involved with community organisations and uh, learn about how to work with the community through community university partnership approaches. Mm. Mm. In terms of Boing Boing, Boing Boing is quite a novel uh, social enterprise, a not-for-profit, Mm -hmm. that um, I co-founded with a community partner quite some years ago now, mm -hmm. in 2010. And the um, approach for that was that it's, it's, it's connected to the university in that university academics volunteer for Boing Boing, myself included, mm -hmm. and um, our staff team are not people who are employed by the university. So it's an interesting partnership. The university very kindly um, accommodates us with some desk spaces for the Boing Boing partners and they are community fellows at the university. So it's a real collaboration with community members thoroughly embedded in the university in a day to day. Mm -hmm. And in terms of impactful research, mm -hmm. that has been very interesting to see how you have a Boing Boing is an identity that sits between the university and the wider community and it belongs to all of us and again that means that people are very much invested in the outcomes of the research and Boing Boing is a partner with the university on research we run a monthly forum where people's research is debated and discussed always have strong participation of community members and policy makers uh, we have a forum in London that we run alongside Young wow. Minds which is a the leading national charity for young people's mental health and um, really seen that those kind of co-learning spaces mm. have had has a very Im interesting impact on ideas being taken up and developed. Mm. So maybe that's a nice way of wrapping it up using what you've just said that impactful research then is about a learning together communities learning from academics academics also learning from communities and by putting their learning together, there is an increased understanding that continues. Angie, thank you so much. We're so grateful for the fabulous workshops that you did and for you sharing your time and your expertise. And I'm looking forward to when you will join us at Obtentia again and we'll be able to show you how we have learnt from what you already know and how we can put our new learning and your older learning together and see what emerges from that. Well, I have to say thank you for inviting me because I've had the most fantastic time here and I've learnt a huge amount visiting community organisations, the school that I visited, sharing ideas with your wonderful colleagues and indeed yourself. Great. It's been really fantastic and congratulations to you for all the really hard work that you all do and thanks for inviting me. Thank you.